Okay guys, welcome back. Um, I know it might be a little bit harder, um, but I'm certainly uh, excited to be back teaching. Um, and I know um, it might be a little bit challenging. Um, the first thing I want to do is I would like to say that um, I will do some live videos at one point, but I wasn't sure how things were going. So the first time I thought I would just go ahead and record everything and make sure it's working and then I'll be able to talk to you live. Um, but um, I did tell you that we kind of had finished all of our geometry, so I'm going to start right back into the Algebra 2 program to kind of help you um, get ready for your entrance exams and your placements exams for next year. And I really just want to uh, help you the most that I possibly can um, so that you'll be a a uh, better math student uh, in high school. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to start off with a little prayer, all right, and um, I'm not sure if anybody of you are sick, but I'd like to say a special prayer for everybody. Um, I pray for your health and healing for you and your family. May God heal all of your sickness and free you from your burdens. He is our healer and deliverer, and he is well able. Amen. I really miss you guys, um, and I especially miss chapel, and um, hopefully we'll be back in school soon. But business is business, and we have to um, get as much information into your brain as possible. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to go through these problems. Um, I really would kind of want to do these without a calculator just to practice your mental math. Um, there's not much to it. Um, but again, since I'm not there monitoring, um, I really kind of want to see the details when you upload it or you um, submit it back into Google Classroom for a grade. So I'll just be looking for those types of things. All right, some of it's good mental math, um, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, um, this is actually section 1-1 from an Algebra 2 book. All right, so let's go ahead and knock this out real quick. All right, so a is negative 2 minus 2 times 3 plus 3 times 4.2. Um, negative 2 minus 6 plus 12.6. Negative 8 plus 12.6. You're left with a 4.6. All right, so again, this is just reviewing basic order of operation, which was PEMDAS, um, and again, should be straightforward, very easy for us, all right? So question number two, we have two times negative two plus three plus three squared, negative four plus six squared, negative four plus 36, 32, all right? Over here for question number three, a is negative two plus three bracket three squared minus negative two plus 4.2. So again, negative two plus three times nine. Now this would be minus 2.2. All right, so now negative two plus three times, now nine minus two is seven, seven minus point two is 6.8. All right, so now we have negative two plus, now 6.8 times three, I always tell kids three times six is 18, and then three times 0.8 is 2.4, so that's going to be 20.4, and then 18.4. All right, so again, I told you it's not going to be that difficult. All right, just reviewing order of operations. All right, now, just so I can see my numbers, um, number four, five times 4.2 minus two bracket three minus negative two plus 4.2. All right, so now we have 5 times 4.2, 12.8. 12.8 plus 
20. 5 times 2 is 1, so 21 minus 2. Now this is where they're trying to trick you. 5 plus 4.2, 21 minus 2 times 9.2, 21 minus 18.4. So again, 21 minus 18 is 3. 3 minus 0.4 is 2.6. All right. Now, again, shrink it down a little bit so I can see the numbers. So number 5, 4 parentheses, 2 times negative 2 plus 3 times 3 minus 2 times 4.2. All right, let's see how that goes. So 4 times negative 4 plus 9 minus 8.4. 4 times 5 minus 8.4. 20 minus 8.4. 12, 11.6. All right, number 6 again. Got to be careful with the fractions. All right, now negative 2 squared plus 4 times 4.2 all over 3 times 3 plus 2 times negative 2. All right, now let's see what we got. 4 plus 16.8 over 9 minus 4. 20.8 over 5. Now, again, I think this is an easy one to divide out. 5 goes into 20 four times. Point, 5 goes into 8, 1, with a 3 left over, which creates a 30. So 5 goes into 30 six times. So 4.16 would be good. All right. Now I'm going to copy the uh, numbers right real quick and drag them down so I don't have to. All right, here we go. All right, and there I have, uh-oh. Make a little bit. All right, here we go. Now we can do the substitution better. All right, so here we go, number seven. Three cubed plus negative two times 4.2 all over negative two times 3 plus 2 times 3 times 4.2. Okay, so now that is going to be 3 cubed is 27 minus, and then that would be 8.4 all over negative 6, and then 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4.2 would be 25.2 and so now on the top 27 minus 8 is 19 19 minus 0.4 is 18.6 and then 25 minus 6 would be 19.2 all right now we have decimals in fractions which you can't have so we'll just move the decimal over to 186 over 192 those are both divisible by 2, so that would be 93 over 91. All right, so that's our answer for that one. All right, so again, it was just easier to just kind of reduce the fraction on that. Now what I want to do is I just want to shrink this down a little bit and start with question number 8. All right, so again, here we go for number 8. We have 3 times 3 plus 2 times negative 2 over, looks like this one's going to be kind of easy, 5 minus 4.2. All right, so now we have 9 minus 4 over 0.8. And again, 5 over 0.8. So we could make that 50 over 8, and then reduce that by 2, and make 25 over 4. So there's my answer, 25 over 4. All right, that wasn't bad. All right, so let's take a look at number 9. All right, 3 times 
negative 2 minus 2 times 4.2 over 4 times negative 2 times 3. All right, so now let's simplify that. Negative 6 minus 8.4 over negative 8 times 3, negative 24. Now the easiest thing to do, remember, is just make them all positive, then you don't have to worry about it. So I end up with 14.4 over 24, which is a little bit annoying. So let's go ahead and move this over to 144 over 240. Then we can divide by 12, 12 over 20. Then we can divide by 4. We get 3 over 5. All right, hopefully you're understanding what I'm doing as far as my reducing. But again, that's just a really good review of how to simplify fractions, okay? Now remember, that's all of 1-1, just PEMDAS, all right? Dealing with fractions, dealing with exponents. So again, I don't think that's going to be hard for you, all right? But please uh, make sure you're copying things down. You can try it on your own and then check your work. There's all so many different things you can do. All right, but I just want you to practice your mental math. Try to do it without a calculator. All right. Now, the next section uh, is one dash two, uh, and it's just dealing with the properties of real numbers and the names. All right. So let's go ahead and start with just the names of the numbers. All right. Um, and basically, we have been working in the real number system, and so real numbers are essentially all numbers, okay? Um, that includes the natural numbers, the whole numbers, the integers, the rationals, and the irrationals. However, in Algebra 2 this year, you will get a taste of what is referred to as imaginary numbers. I've spoken to you a little bit about it, all right? And imaginary numbers are i, all right, and i is defined as the square root of negative one. So essentially what's happening is we have two classification of numbers. We have what's referred to as the real numbers, all right, which would be in this box over here. And we have the imaginaries, which would be over here, all right? And imaginaries have to have i in them, all right? Then what happens is we, well, and, and keep in mind when I said all numbers, all numbers except imaginary numbers, of course, all right? So please keep that in mind. Imaginaries are not part of the reals, but you're not really supposed to know that yet. That'll be coming up in semester two of your Algebra two class, all right? Now, uh, natural numbers, notice natural numbers are n, all right? You're supposed to remember that the natural numbers are just numbers starting with one, two, three, and they go to infinity. Now recall that there are no decimals uh, involved. Um, you can't have like a fraction. There's no zero. All right. So it's just the counting numbers is what we say. The natural numbers are the counting numbers. All right. Now, again, whole numbers, the only difference between a uh, natural number and a whole number is the number zero. So it's zero, one, two, dot, 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 all right, which just basically means there's only one number that separates a natural number and a whole number, and that number is zero. Um, and again, of course, you label whole numbers with a W. All right, now we get into integers, all right, which surprisingly they give as a letter Z. Not exactly sure why, but they decided to call it Z. All right, I was irrational, it could be imaginary, so they had to change the letter. But surprisingly enough, your integers are just dot, 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 negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. And basically integers are just counting numbers and their opposites, counting numbers and their opposites, all right? Um, and they use the letter Z. All right, now rational numbers, I used to tell you, was just be any number that can be written as a fraction. All 
Okay. Now you big enough to understand the formal definition. All right. The formal definition is any number that can be written in the form a over b where a and b are integers um, and b cannot equal zero. Again, the reason why b cannot equal zero is because um, that would make it undefined, because again, you can't divide by zero. All right? Now, um, basically, all natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, um, those all can be written as fractions. So every natural whole number integer is a rational number. But rational numbers include decimals like 1.2 or fractions like 5 thirds or anything we say that any decimal that terminates and doesn't repeat. All right? So, uh, and again, this 1.2 is called a terminating decimal, and 5 thirds, of course, is 1.6 repeating, so that's called a repeating. All right? An irrational number would be like the pi, because that decimal doesn't repeat, and it cannot be written as a fraction. Okay? The other irrational number would be something like square root of 3, all right, where it would be 1.71 dot 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 dot. It doesn't have a repeated pattern, and you can't write it as a fraction. All right. The other famous number is Euler's number, E, all right, and that's very similar to pi. You learn a lot about that in Algebra 2 and pre-calculus. It's like 2.718, and then if I'm not mistaken, it's... 04545. All right. But again, those go on indefinitely. No way to write them as a fraction. Okay. So again, those are just a list of the things you have to know to be able to talk um, in math language. All right. They'll be asking about natural numbers or rationals or irrationals. All right. So you got to be up to speed on just the definitions. All right, now we're just going to obviously review the properties, right? So uh, commutative property, um, you can say commutative property of addition or commutative property of multiplication. That's just saying A plus B is equal to B plus A, or multiplication would be A times B equals B times A. So the order in which you add or the order in which you multiply makes no difference, okay? Makes no difference. Um, the associative property deals with grouping, so it can be addition. You can say A plus B plus C. Notice if I put the parentheses around the A plus B, it's the same as if I write it in the same exact order, but I put the parentheses around the B and the C. It doesn't matter how you add, right? You'll always get the same answer. All right, same thing with multiplication. A, B, C grouped is the same as A, B, C. All right, so it's truly just where you um, group, all right, or how you group. That's called the associative property. All right, the identity for multiplication would be anytime you add zero, you get the same thing, and anytime you multiply by one, you get the same thing. So that's called the identity, all right? Again, these are all review problems, all right, that we learned a long time ago. All right, but you need to be up to speed on them. All right, so your inverse just means think of this canceling things out. So we say a plus negative a is equal to zero, and we say a times one over a equals one. All right, so essentially this is called the additive inverse because there's two numbers that add together that equal zero. And this is called the multiplicative inverse is because there are two things that multiply and cancel. Okay, so again, all right, let's talk about the closure property. All right, the closure property now is something we have not talked about. All right, and basically what's that closure property is saying is 
if you add two things, if you add two, I shouldn't say two things, I should say two real numbers, you're always going to get a what? You're always going to get a real number. In other words, there's no way you can add real numbers and get something that's imaginary or something that doesn't exist. Same thing with multiplication. A times B, we say, is closed because if you multiply two real numbers, you're going to get a real number. Now, there's one little thing I want to remind you of. A divided by B is not closed. All right, the reason we say it's not closed is because if B is zero, then you don't have a real number anymore. It's undefined. All right, so keep a mental note of that. All right, sometimes that's on a test, and I actually saw it on ACT test recently. All right, and finally, the distributor property. All right, can be summarized as A, everybody's done this a bunch, which would just be A times B plus A times C. All right, so again, guys, that's it for one, two. One, three is just what? Solving equations. You guys are experts on solving the equations, so I don't really need to explain anything on that. I just want you to work hard on the IXL um, and knock that out. Now, I want to talk about the IXL. You're expected to go to Algebra 2, IXL now, and do A1 and A2 and B1. And what's going to happen is I'm going to grade that, all right, to make sure you understand what we're doing. Then, however, I did not find a good uh, uh, for the properties. So I wanted you to go back to Algebra 1 and do H1 and H2. And this is probably the only time we're going to go back to Algebra 1. But I need you to go to Algebra 1 and do H1 and H2. Okay, so guys, that's it. Um, we're going to try to do some live things. I know I may have mentioned that earlier, but I really and truly miss you guys. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I um, hope to see you soon. Hopefully this coronavirus uh, gets uh, solved. Um, but again, keep you in my prayers, and hopefully uh, you are safe. Uh, and if you have any questions or concerns, you can always... Uh, contact me um, through Google Classroom or what other uh, devices that you have. All right, you guys take care. Have a safe day.